Hi, I'm Gary Neighbors, and I'm here at the East Coast Hot Wheels Museum in Maryland, and today we're going to continue our look at the 16 original Hot Wheels cars from 1968, known as the Sweet 16. In this episode, we'll look at four more of the cars, including the real car that inspired the iconic look of the original Hot Wheels. We've got some awesome cars to look at, so let's get started. car on our list is the Custom Cougar. This car was based on the 1967 Mercury Cougar, which was the debut year for the car, and it was honored with the award of Motor Trend Car of the Year. The base price of a 1967 Cougar was $2,854, but some Hot Wheels Custom Cougars have now sold for more than that. Let's join the Cougar Hunt and take a look at the Hot Wheels version. The original colors on this car were orange and blue, and the cars with most of the early production features are found in these colors. And most notably on the Cougar, some of the Hong Kong Cougars were issued with a black roof, but no U.S. Cougars were made this way. Most 1968 Hot Wheels cars have variations that are associated with being the first of its kind to be produced at the factory, and the Cougar is no exception. The early run Cougars feature what collectors call a painted tooth. This refers to the dab of paint on the grill underneath the tip of the hood. They came in either blue or orange for Hong Kong cars and blue, lime yellow, and antifreeze for US cars. I should say that the color antifreeze is Hot Wheels collector lingo for a color that's a cross between yellow and light green, just like the antifreeze that goes in your car. And the painted tooth really resembles the look of the front end of a real 1967 Cougar, where the tip of the hood extends down into the grill. The painted tooth was done by hand, and this detail was apparently phased out pretty early on in manufacturing. Also, the early run US Cougars had a different base than later issue cars. The early base has a small gas tank, and the later base has a much larger gas tank. Early run Cougars from Hong Kong were made in blue with a blue interior and orange with an orange brown interior. These are also popular with collectors. Like other Sweet 16 cars, the Cougar was modified and released in 1970 as part of the spoiler series, where it was called the Nitty Gritty Kitty. This was basically the same car, but with the hood removed and the front and rear spoilers added. In terms of values, there are some extremely rare and valuable Cougars, as is the case for many of the 1968 Hot Wheels muscle cars. The US dark brown Cougar is a famous rarity from 1968. It's valued at about $3,500. But the purple Cougar with the black roof has sold for more. In fact, it's the last member of the big four from 1968, having sold for as much as $10,000 for a loose car. The light blue Cougar is also a very valuable car, and it books for about $2,200. Some of these cars were included in the 1968 retail store display. The US Red Cougar is valued at about $1,500. Red is a common color for most other 68s, but not for the Cougar. And the Hong Kong black roof cars in green, aqua, red, and purple range from about $2,500 to $5,000. These are rarely available for sale. The Hong Kong cars with black roof, like the olive one here, are much more affordable, going for about $250. A Cougar in a common color runs about $150 to $200. Well, that's it for the Cougar, and next we're going to hit the only Cadillac from the Sweet 16, the Custom Eldorado. The Hot Wheels car was based on the 1967 Cadillac Eldorado Coupe de Ville with a black vinyl roof. 
This was the eighth generation of the Eldorado, which Gia made from 1967 to 1970. This, of course, was released when Cadillac was literally the Cadillac of automobiles, before Mercedes, BMW, and others took a major chunk out of their market share. All of the Hot Wheels versions of the Eldorado came with a black painted roof to simulate the vinyl roof of the real car. All right, so let's take a look at the Hot Wheels version. The original colors for this car were to be blue and gold, but this is one of the cars that eventually was released in as many as 19 different colors. In terms of variations between the U.S. and the Hong Kong made cars, the Hong Kong model has a hood that's a little bit longer than on the U.S. model. And for the Eldorado, there are really no major variations that interest collectors besides the body paint color. As far as values, the Hong Kong creamy pink Eldorado is the most valuable and sells for about $1,500. The U.S. model in hot pink will sell for about $1,000 and so does the Hong Kong version in copper brown. And a custom Eldorado in a common color in good condition will set you back around $100. Like other members of the Sweet 16, the Cadillac Eldorado was released again as a Hot Wheels car in 1971 as part of the Spoiler series, where it was called the Sugar Caddy. This was either a whole new casting or a heavily retooled version of the custom Eldorado. Next up on the list is the only ragtop car of the Sweet 16, so let's get ready to feel that 100 mile per hour breeze in your hair and take on the custom Firebird. Up next is the Hot Wheels Custom Firebird. This car was based on the 1968 Pontiac Firebird convertible, which was the first generation of Firebird. The car shared its platform and major components with the Chevy Camaro, which was introduced in 1967. And both the Firebird and the Camaro were in fierce competition with the Ford Mustang and the Mercury Cougar. For the Hot Wheels version of the car, Harry Bradley changed the proportions a bit, making it narrower and sleeker than the real car, which was rather wide for its length. The Hot Wheels Firebird was originally released in either red or blue from both factories, and it was eventually released in about a dozen different colors from each plant. Like a number of the early Hot Wheels cars from 1968, the first Hong Kong Firebirds in red or blue were released with interiors that matched the body color. Collectors go for these, and they really look cool because you can see the interior well since the cars are convertible. There's also an interesting late-run version of the U.S. Firebird where door outlines were added to the body. These cars are known to collectors as Doorline Firebirds. They're thought to have been created as Mattel was working on a car for 1970 called the Light My Firebird, which has deep door outlines. Custom Firebirds with door lines command a premium and come in about eight different colors. The Light My Firebird appears to be almost identical to the U.S. Firebird body, but with a blown engine and spoilers in the front and rear. And it uses the same interior as the U.S. Custom Firebird. The most valuable color on the Firebird is the Hong Kong Creamy Pink car, which books at about $2,200, but is sold for more. Next up would be the Rose or Red Firebird with the door lines at about $1,200 to $1,500, and a Firebird in a common color tends to sell for about $125 to $150. So next up, let's go see the Hot Wheels car that started it all, and that's the Custom Fleet Side. The next car is really something special, as it was based upon Hot Wheels designer Harry Bradley's own modified Chevy El Camino. Bradley designed 15 of the 16 original Sweet 16 models. In 1966, while Bradley was working at the Cadillac Design Studio at GM, he bought a new, fully loaded, white Chevy El Camino. He took that El Camino to the Alexander Brothers Custom Shop in Detroit to have it modified to his specifications, which included chopping the top and adding mock velocity stacks that stuck up through the hood. The finished product was painted in school bus yellow. Bradley prepared this as a prototype for the 1968 El Camino. It was this version of the car that he drove from Detroit to California after he was hired by Mattel to design Hot Wheels cars. 
Bradley had contracted polio as a child and walked with crutches. Here he is in an ad for Champion Spark Plugs from 1972. Because of his handicap, when he started with Mattel, he was given a handicapped parking space right near the front door of the building. That's the reason why Mattel's boss, Elliot Handler, saw Harry's car every day and was influenced to make Hot Wheels look like the car that Bradley drove. Bradley believes that had it not been for his handicap, Handler probably never would have noticed the now famous car. But of course, Handler did notice and asked Bradley to design Mattel's new Hot Wheels cars to look like Bradley's own car. The custom fleet side ended up being essentially a miniature version of Bradley's car. Bradley has told stories of how he would arrive at his car after work and sometimes find Barbie legs or bananas sticking out of the engine stacks. So after he left Mattel, Bradley had come to feel that the fleet side was a little too outrageous for his taste and decided to give the car a more subdued look. He took the car to customizer Bill Cushenberry, who was the well-known creator of cars like the Silhouette and the Dream Rod, which became the Hot Wheels Python. Bradley had Cushenberry remove the stacks and the fender skirts over the rear wheels and paint the car in olive green. The new version of the fleet side made the cover of Rod and Custom magazine in July 1968. But Harry Bradley could not keep his hands off the fleet side and transformed it again starting in 1973 into a build he called Blind Faith, which is currently at the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles. The original Hot Wheels custom fleet sides were issued in either purple or orange, and the cars that have many of the early production details are found in these colors. Early run fleet sides have vertical rear taillights, which were later switched to horizontal taillights. All fleet sides only came with a black interior as the bed cover is connected to the interior, and all of the beds are black. The first examples of the Hong Kong made custom fleet sides came out with body color paint on the back and the front of the base. These were only in purple or orange color. Later, the body color paint appeared only on the rear and then no paint was used on the base. Also, some early Hong Kong cars had the tops of the carburetor stacks hand painted silver. Collectors call these painted stacks cars. Like the painted tooth on the Cougar, this feature was phased out pretty early during manufacturing. A few very rare examples of the custom fleet side have the black roof paint extending all along the top of the bed rails. These are referred to as fleet sides with painted rails. The fleet side was later issued in a set from 1970 as the Aero Launcher or Sky Show fleet side, where it was equipped with a ramp to launch plastic airplanes. The set had a piece that allowed the fleet side to launch a plane when it crossed a special trigger piece of track. As far as values, all fleet sides are tough to find in mint condition loose. There are big heavy cars and they got damaged easily, especially the black paint on the front of the grill and at the rear. The most valuable fleet side is the US model in dark brown, which only came in the strip action track set. It's worth on the order of two to three thousand dollars in nice condition. The very early fleet sides with painted rails are also really valuable, selling for about two thousand dollars for a really nice one. Also valuable are the Hong Kong red and U.S. light blue fleet sides, which sell for about two thousand dollars. A common color custom fleet side in good condition will set you back about eighty to a hundred dollars. But I really like the orange and purple. Hong Kong models that have the double painted base, they have the deep dish wheels, and the painted stacks. And these are not super hard to find and are really a cool piece of early Hot Wheels history. Okay, we're halfway through the Sweet 16, and up next we're going to take on another monster in the vintage Hot Wheels hobby.